Welcome to Databricks on Google Cloud. In this video, we will show you how to get yourself and your team started on Databricks in just a few minutes. Let's start by logging into the Google Cloud platform. If you don't have an existing Google Cloud account, sign up for a new account. Select a Google Cloud project before you begin the subscription process. If you would like to create a new project, Enter your project name and confirm that you have a Google Cloud Identity Organization object defined within your Google Cloud console. Once this project is created, select your project from the drop down menu in the upper navigation. Before subscribing to Databricks, check with your billing admin for a Google Billing account that you may use to subscribe to Databricks. Find Billing in the left navigation bar and either link to a new account or upgrade an existing account. Now, find Databricks under Partner Solutions on the left nav bar of Google Cloud Console, or simply search for Databricks in the Google Cloud Marketplace. Once you select the subscription period and billing account, you can confirm the terms of service to purchase. You will see a pop-up window to register with Databricks. Sign in with this familiar blue Google SSO. Put your organization name in free text. You will be returned to the Google Cloud Marketplace once you are registered. Click the blue button, Manage on Provider. Confirm your identity. You will now see the Databricks account console. Now we are ready to create a Databricks workspace where users can work. But first, we'll need to set up a few prerequisites. There are a few prerequisites to set up your Databricks on Google Cloud account and create your first Databricks workspace. This first step is to ensure you allocate the minimum quotas required for the target Google Cloud regions where the Databricks clusters will run. There are three resource quotas you will need. CPUs, N2 CPUs, and SSD total storage. For each, make sure their quota is equal to or greater than the minimum listed here in the documentation. Within the IAM and Admin tab on the GCP console, use the top search bar to find these quotas. Once you have the list of quotas filtered, click on each one and increase if necessary to the required minimums. Fill out a brief description to request the new quota limit. Once the quota is approved, you will receive an approval email from Google. Calculate the subnet sizes to be used for your workspace. When you create a new workspace using the account console, Databricks creates a Google Cloud GKE cluster. By default, Databricks decides the IP ranges for the subnets. You can optionally use advanced configurations to subnet sizes explicitly. Please refer to Databricks documentation for more details on sizing networks. Additionally, if your organization has any Google Cloud policies in place that would block resource creation, such as domain-restricted sharing, please make sure to adjust those to allow for Databricks to function in your projects. You can review our documentation for more details, as each account in the Google environment has unique settings. Once you have configured the prerequisites, you are all set to create a new Databricks workspace. Log in to Databricks from the GCP Marketplace with Google SSO. You are now in the Databricks Account Admin Console. In the Workspace tab in the Product sidebar, click on Create Workspace and enter your desired workspace name, region, and Google Cloud Project ID that you see in your GCP Console. Within a few seconds, you will see your workspace being provisioned. Click on the Workspace URL and log in with the Google SSO. Your first Databricks workspace is deployed. A Databricks admin can manage user accounts with the Databricks admin console in the upper right corner. Go to the Users tab on the admin console to add and remove users. To add a user on the Users tab, click Add User. Enter the user email ID and click Send Invite. Databricks sends a confirmation email with the workspace URL. The user is added to the workspace. The user is authenticated through Databricks integration with Google's Cloud Identity OAuth 2.0 implementation. Want to take it for a spin? Create a new cluster in your Databricks workspace. When you create a new cluster for the first time, Databricks bootstraps a GKE cluster, which can take up to 20 minutes. Subsequent Databricks clusters will only take a few seconds. Let's explore the quick start tutorial to get started. You will need a notebook. A notebook is a collection of cells that runs computations on a Databricks cluster. Attach the Databricks quick start notebook to the cluster you created just now. The default language is SQL, but you can use any of the other languages like Python, Scala, or R and switch between them in the same notebook. 
Here, we are creating a table using data from a sample CSV data file available in Databricks datasets, a collection of datasets mounted to Databricks file system, DBFS, a distributed file system installed on Databricks clusters. Write the CSV data to Delta Lake format and create a Delta table. Delta Lake offers a powerful transactional storage layer that enables fast reads, ACID transactions, and many other reliability and performance benefits. Delta Lake format consists of Parquet files plus a transaction log. We use Delta Lake to get the best performance on future operations on the table. Read the CSV data into a data frame and write out in Delta Lake format. This command uses a Python language magic command, which allows you to interleave commands in languages other than the notebook default language, SQL. Create a Delta table at the stored location. Next, we run a SQL statement to query the table for the average diamond price by color. You can click the bar chart icon to display a chart of the average diamond price by color. That's it! We've covered how to set up your Databricks on Google Cloud account and get started as a user in the Databricks data science and engineering workspace by creating a cluster, a notebook, running SQL commands, and displaying results.